Hey everybody, this is GGB Cause Poppers, and today we're going to be getting into this final episode of the Conference of Champions series. I hope you guys have enjoyed it so far. I've enjoyed making it for you guys. And it's going to be a long, long time until we get to see sports again. So, this is going to be my last episode in a while. So, I hope you guys had a great time watching this series. I'm going to miss it. But time for me to move on move on to the next uh i don't know whatever thing to do think about learning how to play an instrument so just a lot of things on my mind i'm gonna miss doing these episodes with you guys every night <sighs> uh anyways i hope you guys have enjoyed it so far it does take a took a lot of work, but, you know, I mean, what else was I going to do? I mean, definitely ha gave me something to do, and it really helped me get through most of this, these months by myself, really. And I thank you guys for watching it, because it really kept me going. But, uh, uh, this is the last sports video I'm going to do in, probably in a while. There's not really a lot to do, considering... We don't see football, uh, NFL until September 10th. I might do some college football videos, but still that's the beginning of, like, August. I might do a... I'll do a playoff predictions video before the season starts for both college and NFL. But it's probably all I'm going to do. Boop, 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 boop. So, really going to be gone for quite a while. Uh, when the NBA Finals come back, NBA comes back, I mean, oh, I might do the playoffs. Let me know in the comment section below if you the guys like to watch some NBA videos of my opinions. I mean, NBA is really all I have left at this point. Uh, let me know below. Also, I'm thinking about doing a March Madness video next year. Let me know, because I know losing March Madness was one of the biggest disappointments of the year so far for me. So, First and ten. Lamar Jackson hands it off to Devonta Freeman, who gets about nine yards. Great play by Devonta Freeman, who's really had a game. I let Devonta Freeman has really carried this offense at times today, and honestly, I expected that to be Dalvin Cook, but I guess apparently, it's Devonta Freeman. Devonta Freeman just worked out better today. Maybe it was just the matchup, but it definitely looks like the ACC's in control here. It definitely looks like they're gonna end up winning this game, ACC. Maybe oh, they'll probably they're probably looks like they're probably going to become the second ever conference of champions. Uh, I don't know, champion, but ACC and Big Ten are the only two. With, I mean, SEC. I mean, I'm an idiot. Leave me alone. The Big Ten won it the first year. ACC looks like it's going to win it this year. I'm excited to see. Fletcher Cox gets his first sack of the day, by the way. But I'm excited to see how next year's rosters end up looking. I'm hyped. I hope you guys are hyped. Madden 21 seems like a while away now, considering this this coronavirus pandemic. And I sure hope to God the games aren't canceled, because if they are, I might die. I might just, you know, burst into flames, because I don't know if I can deal with... No sports for a season. I understand not putting fans in the stands, but I desperately need football or basketball. Something. Give me something. If I don't get something, I will die. So it was Lamar Jackson has forever to throw as the no per the norm. And he gets it to a third and 13. Picks up about four yards. As you can see, Lamar Jackson's had a pretty good day today. So hopefully for Lamar... He will. Uh, he almost uh, made a big mistake at the end of the Big Ten game that almost cost him the game. If it wasn't for Russell Wilson being an idiot, uh, and if I'm saying, and they he had fumbled in the Big Twelve game that almost cost them the game, and. That was an idiotic move, and if it wasn't for Kyle Shanahan's horrible, uh, I want to say play calling, but it's not just the play calling. It was uh, some 
clock management issues too. There's Tyler Lockett should have gone out of bounds sometimes. Some of his receivers didn't go out of bounds when he should have gotten out of bounds. That would have saved him a lot of time and a chance at a comeback. So, but honestly, the ACC has fought their way through some heartache, and they have a chance here as long as they hold out to be the second ever Conference of Champions champion. And it's going to be interesting to see what happens next year because we ha- are going to have a really talented starting quarterbacks in these conferences. Cha- and not just the top few. Like, the SEC is going to have Stafford or Prescott, whoever ends up starting next year. Uh, the Big Ten will have Russell Wilson or Brady or Breeze. It's really a toss-up at this point. And, uh... The ACC will have Lamar Jackson, you know, for a long time. Pac-12 still has Aaron Rodgers. And you have FCS Division II, Division III. We're going to see a duel uh, duel between Carson Wentz and Jimmy G. So that's definitely going to be interesting. Uh, Pac- Big 12, we got Patrick Mahomes. And that guy's amazing. And then other teams, we got teams like Mountain West, who... Ooh, the ACC almost got the fix. Mountain West has... Two starting quarterbacks on its roster and Derek Carr and what's his face? Derek Carr and Josh Allen. I honestly think Josh Allen will probably end up starting for this Mountain West Saints team next year. Uh we also they're also gonna have Jordan Love on the roster, so although he's not gonna start next year, he could boom, take off, and end up starting a couple years from now. So that's definitely gonna be an interesting scenario. Uh that could play out. You could also see uh, MAC be good next year. Or good enough. I don't know. Uh, but Big Ben didn't have a great... He, he had a pretty horrendous game. That's not why. Against the... Uh, damn, I'm an idiot. Uh, Independence Chiefs. Independent Chiefs. Uh... Really had a bad game. But on top of that, the MAC still does have a very talented offensive roster. The defense might be very weak and poor, uh, but they do have some hope there for a couple years run. They're not going to have Big Ben Roethlisberger for long, and once they lose him, they're probably not going to compete for a long time. Uh, But you got... Big Ben Roethlisberger, you got Kareem Hunt at running back, who's an amazing running back. You got a receiving core with Antonio Brown, Julian Edelman, and Kenny Galladay. Three fantastic receivers. Uh, and then you got a pretty good offensive line. I wouldn't say a great offensive line. But you had some great spots on it. Some, And then the defense, although you got Khalil Mack, it was pretty weak all around other than that. But Max Crosby, if he could step up and be great, he could end up being a big playmaker for that team. And if they could get Sean Murphy Bunting, I think that's his name. Uh, if he can step it up, then they can get a a solid play p- player in that secondary. So definitely going to be interesting to see if the Ravens do better than the Rams next year. If the Ravens do do, do better than the Rams do, then uh, we're going to get another Ravens-style offense with Big Ben Roethlisberger running it, which means to see a lot of read options with Big Ben Roethlisberger, which was, I'm not going to lie, pretty fun to watch. <laughs> but uh, other than the MAC, we got Independence, and Independence are going to be run by Andy Reid for, until he probably retires. Since he went to BYU, and he's still probably one of the best coaches in the league. And they've got a great coach. And they have a good defense. I'd say they got a pretty good offense. If Taysom Hill can take a step up in a couple of years, I'm probably he's not starting this year. But I bet Breeze isn't. This is his last year in New Orleans, or just in the NFL in general, I guess. But. Breeze is gone. It's going to be all about who's taking the mantle of, you know, Breeze. Will it be Taysom or will it be Jameis Winston? Honestly, I don't know what to hope for because I love Taysom's playmaking ability. But if Jameis can get his 
head in the game and stop with all the turnovers. He has tremendous arm talent. So it'll be all about how he grows this year. And that'll be interesting. But if we wanted to keep a quarterback like that, hope you have him start eventually. We just could have kept Teddy Bridgewater, but let's be honest here. Jameis Winston has much more arm talent than Teddy Bridgewater does. But... Teddy B, it's going to be really weird to watch an offense. Yeah, I have a backup quarterback that's not Teddy B. I loved Teddy B last year. Great, great, great quarterback for us. Went and went undefeated when he was their backup, when he came onto the field for Drew Brees' injury. But let's stop talking about that. But Taysom, if he ends up getting that starting job in New Orleans and it rocks out like Lamar does for this offense, and I could see it happening. Taysom has... A very similar skill set to uh, Lamar Jackson. Obviously, Lamar Jackson's a better thrower. Uh, but I don't think that's going to impact that much. And I guess the Saints could just transfer to a, a Lamar Jackson-type offense. But then you have teams like the American. And the American's on a downward spiral. They're kind of doomed. I, d I don't know what's going to happen with them, but... I wouldn't feel confident. There's a lot of there's a lot of reasons to feel confident for every conference. Like the ACC, you could be like, we won the entire thing last year, the Big Ten. Well, we went to the conference championship. You just ended up being beaten by the ACC who went and won it all. SEC, same thing. You lost to the ACC, and that's nothing to be ashamed of. Uh, they're a very, very good football team. Uh, you also have teams like... Pac-12, even though they went down in the di divisionals, it was a very close game, and they do have a lot of good players on their team. So there's, like, all the top six teams, there's no reason they should even be sad at all. They all have a chance, a viable chance to go compete for a national championship. Mountain West has some very good key, very good players on their team. And it looks like they're building... If Josh Allen can really improve, they're going to have a great quarterback for the future. On top of that, you got Independence, and you got Taysom. Taysom's going to be a quarterback for the future, and he's going to play great. And other than that, they have a great team built up already. They just need quarter good quarterback play. And uh, what else was there? And the MAC, you still got Big Ben. You still got an amazing, explosive offense. Uh, you have the... What was it? I think I got a uh, Conference USA. You got Nick Mullins. And yeah, honestly, Aaron Jones, Devin Singletary, T.Y. Hilton. Honestly, all those guys played fantastic. Played, played fantastic in the regular season last year. If they could, their Madden ratings grow, go up and you get some good offensive linemen, then you can seriously do some damage in the playoffs. And Sunbelt. Sunbelt played extremely well against FCS Division II, Division Three Packers, and it was honestly a pretty close game until the fourth quarter. Uh, but Sunbelt, it got a, if you didn't know, two University of Louisiana Lafayette offensive linemen were drafted this year, so they add two new offensive linemen to that front five, trying to stop the run. And honestly, that's, I mean, not trying to, what am I talking about? I'm trying trying to set up the run and protect. Uh, Brandon Silvers but uh, honestly all those teams have reason to hope I just don't see it for uh, the American Conference I'm sorry I, I just don't what the heck are you doing DeAndre Hopkins you just run into the wall but uh, I just don't see it everyone else they, I think they have reason to be happy Conference USA and Sunbelt really played well and even teams that didn't like the MAC they're still stacked and they have a great chance for next year on offense. So the defense definitely needs a little bit of helping. Hopefully for that team, you get some better defensive players on there. But uh, American, I just I don't know what to say. It's not like a great new American quarterback came out of the conference this year. Like I don't even know if one did. Did one come out? I just I just don't know. <laughs> definitely wasn't drafted. That's for sure. I just. I don't I don't know what's going to happen there but American definitely they need something they need to 
get a quarterback desperately. That's what they need. But Case Keenum's not getting it done. And let me tell you, if you think Case Keenum's bad, Blake Bortles is not going to astound you. So they definitely need to go more run game with Marlon Mack. But then you you have the... That's what they tried against the Mountain West. A defense really should be formidable, though. Like, also, next year they'll be losing every single one of their UConn books, which might not sound like a big deal, but then you lose Byron Jones. And see, here's the thing. You move Byron Jones from your top corner, and he's going to move on to the FCS Division Two, Division Three team because he if you didn't know the the UConn as a college university of Connecticut decided to go to the big east as a conference started playing there now so instead of the american they'll be an FCS division 2 II, division 3 team so it's definitely going to be weird 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 to not see Byron Jones on that team but see him on another team but now AJ Boye will be their top corner in the game, probably. And they just gotta hope Mackenzie Milton comes back from that injury, because honestly, he's their only hope for the future at quarterback. It's really the truth. I mean, if Mackenzie Milton comes back, I still, arguably, I think he's one of the best quarterbacks in any draft class. And although I feel like. Mackenzie Milton wouldn't be as proven, and he's coming off the leg injury. That's a risky move. But if he goes next year, and he he goes out next year, and he plays amazing for UCF, I get taking Trevor Lawrence before him, and I get taking Justin Fields, but I feel like he's the third quarterback to go off that board. Because I feel like, other than Milton, the third best quarterback in that draft class is like Sam Ellinger. So, I'm not sure... I want to draft Sam Ellinger as my future franchise quarterback when I could take a risk on a guy like Mackenzie Milton, who's just been astounding when he's on. He's almost always on, by the way. <laughs> the only time that we really saw him not do well. Yeah, I don't think I've ever seen him not do well, honestly. I think he's played absolutely amazing in every single game I've seen. So that, if you're an American fan... You still, you're still a couple of years away from getting a guy like that. Maybe two. Two more. I mean, this uh, this one. The next year, you won't have any good quarterbacks. But maybe the year after that, and Mackenzie Milton goes in the same draft class as Trevor Lawrence, you could get a guy. But you're start probably about three or four years away from actually competing. If we're being honest here. I'm I'm sorry, American fans, but it's true. It's 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 true. Sorry. It's gonna be weird next year though. We're gonna be seeing a lot of teams switch wait, great play by Aaron Donald, getting in there, getting the sack on Matt Stafford, but honestly, I see a lot of teams switching up. I could see the ACC probably is gonna stay the same. I bet we see the ACC Buccaneers next year as well. Just because, you know, uh Bruce Arians went to Virginia Tech and you know, he definitely seems like the best equipped ACC coach to either lead his teams to the playoffs or be the best record of those teams. But uh, SEC will be not seeing the Browns next year. I, I don't know who we're going to end up seeing. But at the very least, we will have a team because, as we know, Freddie Kitchens, who is the head coach of the Browns in this little version, which is why they're the Browns, uh, he went on to the Giants, so if that, if the SEC doesn't end up finding a coach, the Giants will have opening, uh, the head coach, Giants have him at offensive coordinator, so that would work. Uh, but we will not be seeing, hey, Matt Stafford's dropping dimes out here, oh, but he was dropped by OBJ. But, uh, honestly, we we're not gonna see the... Actually, I'm going to take that back. I bet we see the Big Ten as the exact same team next year. It's either going to be Mike Frabel and the Titans or Frank Reich and the Colts. I feel like those are the two most likely. I feel like those are the only two that actually make any sense. But you have... I bet it's going to end up being the Titans again. But Pac-12, 
It's no longer going to be going to be the Panthers, which is going to be weird. We're not going to be able to say the Pac-12 Panthers. But it's going to be the Pac-12 Redskins because Ron Rivera, the only head coach that went to a Pac-12 school, ha is going to... Uh, he's going to the Redskins. It's definitely going to not come off the tongue as easily as the Pac-12 Panthers, but the Pac-12, they will be the Redskins next year. Uh, FCS Division 2, Division 3, it's definitely going to be a toss. -up. I doubt it's the Packers next year. Remember, most head coaches in the NFL actually went to an FCS Division 2, Division 3 team. For goodness sakes, the four, the team that did the fourth best last year was an FCS Division 2, Division 3 head coach, and still... That that was that was weird that he only I'm sorry he did the third best. It was weird that it wasn't an FCS Division two Division three head coach because most of those players and most of those head coaches went to smaller schools. Bill Belichick, Sean Payton, all those guys went to smaller schools like that, and it's honestly the majority of those guys are went to smaller schools. Is what I was trying to say. But, what else? So we're probably not going to see the FCS Division Two, Division Three Packers next year. Big 12, I bet they will stay the 49ers, considering the only other option is Anthony Lynn and the Chargers. And I don't know. I don't know. Honestly, I'm going to take that back, because the Big 12 might end up being next year Cliff Kingsbury and the Arizona Cardinals, because the three coaches that went to the Big 12 teams are Cliff Kingsbury and the Cardinals. Kyle Shanahan and the 49ers, and you got Anthony Lynn and the Chargers. So, I feel, I'm feeling a, a Cliff Kingsbury and the Cardinals year this year. So, that's definitely going to be an interesting thing. I feel like they, we could end up seeing the Big 12 Cardinals next year. But, uh, Mountain West is probably going to be staying the same. Don't you worry, guys. We see the Mountain West Saints for probably a very long time. Uh, we also, unless the Saints do fantastically well, in that case they will be the FCS Division Two, Division Three program because Sean Payton went to Eastern Illinois. But you have, what was I thinking? I was thinking words. The English language was on my mind. Uh, the Independent Chiefs will stay the same. Uh, Andy Reid went to BYU, only head coach in the NFL that went to a independent school. So they'll be staying the Chiefs for a long time, so you don't have to worry about that. Having your favorite team switch up on you and you'll be confused. Uh, American could easily move on. I, I don't know. I don't think a head coach has been nominated. So I, I think the Steelers is a possibility still next year, unless Mike Tomlin again does very well and takes the FCS Division Two, Division Three spot. Uh... I don't know if the guy from Rice is still coaching Conference USA. Would still be. I don't know if he's still on the Cowboys. I don't know if he's still a defensive coordinator for the Cowboys is what I was trying to say. Uh, but he might be. I don't know. And then you have. And then finally you have. No, never mind. You still have the MAC. Uh, they're going to be. It's going to be either the MAC Ravens or the MAC Rams, guys. I honestly see the Ravens doing better than the Rams this year. Rams have just gutted their roster. <laughs> They're just, I guess, hoping that Jared Goff doesn't turn out to be a flop. It's going to be interesting to see who does the worst next year and who ends up drafting Trevor Lawrence. Because Minshew will be playing for his job, and I think actually Minshew can do really well. And uh, you have, other than that, I don't know any other teams that really... I mean, obviously the Pats could use one. But I feel like they're... Bill Belichick's going to force his way to a couple wins on that season alone. I don't I don't know who else needs a quarterback in the NFL. I mean, obviously if you're Tampa, you'd like a Brady replacement eventually. And if you're Pittsburgh, you'd like a big Ben replacement. And uh, who else is old out there? Oh, the Colts need a backup. Uh, uh, although they might be believed... Jacob Eason is the the guy for them in the future. I did rank him as my fifth best quarterback prospect, which is not great, but it's also not horrible either. So definitely going to be interesting because you see how these rosters shake out. I always love to see how the rosters shake out. It's always different every year. You end up with a different starter 
You get some rookies on the team. You get a wonder if they're actually, they're just a one-time wonder or if they're actually going to be a staple point on that team for a long time. So, definitely interesting. Was Nick Bosa's uh, rookie year just a fluke? And so what's going to be interesting next year to me is this, it sounds weird, but the Stafford and the Detroit Lions, because if you look at that offense, they have the firepower. You have, honestly, though, think about it, okay? I know you're laughing, probably, uh, but the Lions have now two solid running backs in on Johnson and DeAndre Swift. Now, the Lions also got have, I mean, Kenny Galladay, one of the best receivers in the NFL, Marvin Jones Jr., a very solid receiver, and Danny Amendola, a great slot guy for them last year. Also, at tight end, they have TJ Hawkinson, their first-round draft pick from last year, and Jesse James, who is a very solid veteran. And I honestly think Stafford is one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL right now. I go, like, Patrick Mahomes, and then, like, the second-favorite quarterback. My quarterback that I'd like to have after that would be another one. I, I take Deshaun Watson. You think he's the second best quarterback in the league? No, no offense to Lamar. I think Lamar is great at running, but I think I'd rather have Deshaun just because of his ability to throw. But honestly, third best, fourth best quarterback, I'd like to have Lamar just because of his pure running ability. But I think, honestly, I'd like to have Stafford ahead of a lot of other players. Actually, I don't know. Matthew Stafford and Russell Wilson are close to the same level to me. Because I really like Russell Wilson and his scrambling ability, but I think Matthew Stafford's can be amazing from the pocket. And he gets sacked again. Grady Jarrett gets the sack this time. And as you can see, ACC is going to come out on top of this game. It's pretty obvious. But they fought hard, and the ACC has a lot to be proud of. They're going to come up with this conference of championship, uh, national championship, I guess. And uh, it's going to be, next year's going to be just as hype as this year. Hopefully better, because I'd really like some closer games. I like, obviously, the FCS Division Two, Division Three, Pac-12 game was one of the best I've seen all year. There were some close ones, the Big Ten and the ACC and the ACC and the Big 12 were both good. I like the Conference USA even though that wasn't the closest game, I really liked the Conference USA Big 12 game. That seemed, that was a lot of fun for me. Uh, I enjoyed seeing the Conference USA actually keep really close and give the Big 12 a really good game. So, fourth and goal. We're going to be seeing the last few plays of this Conference of Champions series. Goes for the end zone. It's picked off. Great play by Justin Simmons. And honestly, I don't know if this ACC team is going to be this good next year as well. Uh, Lamar Jackson had an unmatchable season this year. And I don't know if he's going to be able to match it. <laughs> I'm just, I know it sounds weird, but it's true. I, I don't know if he's going to be able to do the same thing last year that he did this year, which is lead the Ravens to a 13-3 and number one overall seed. I mean, 13-3 record, number one overall seed overall, I guess. And I, people are hating on teams, but I honestly think I'm going to defend a team that I really like here. Okay, so I'm going to defend two of my favorite teams here. I really liked what the Saints did with their draft. They got Cesar Ruiz, and uh, he's going to replace one of our guards. I hope it's Andrews Pete this year, because Andrews Pete is bad. He's not that good, and I would love if I could get five solid offensive linemen on the field at one time. We got four really good ones, but uh, Andrews Pete's a weak spot. Also, we got Zach Bond in the third round. That's a linebacker. He's fantastic. He was a first-round talent, and I was so glad the Saints moved up to grab him. I love Bond, and he's going to fit a huge hole with A.J. Klein gone. Uh, finally, we got in the third round an amazing tight end in Adam Troutman, who will be our tight end of the future, hopefully. Crush your fingers. Adam Troutman's a really good tight end, and honestly, I hope that we can get him involved this year. And the last play of the Super Bowl is going to be a sack. ACC officially wins it, and great job. You're in the zone just in time for the game to end. But I really like that Adam Troutman pick. That gives us another 
weapon on offense. And I'm really excited to see the Saints offense next year. I don't know if you guys are, but we're going to get to see Drew Brees and Michael Thomas and Alvin Kamara. But not just those guys. Uh, Latavius Murray was pretty good last year, but also we get, what was I thinking? Uh, Emmanuel Sanders. He's amazing. Uh, but what I'm really psyched about is this tight end group that we have. We get Jared Cook back, and he is a very solid receiver. We get Adam Troutman, who I think could be an amazing tight end if given the chance. And then we also have Josh Hill. And Josh Hill's not as flashy, but he is really solid, and I really love Josh Hill as a player. And also receiver. Here's what I'm wondering. Do we get Deontay Harris involved more this year? Because I really liked him last year as our punt return guy. And he almost got us that field goal that would have, you know, won the game for us. I guess, looking back in hindsight, if no, the Vikings didn't score any more points than they did, uh, would have won us the game because we would have hit that field goal. Also, here's the, th the trade and play that I think is really interesting and is a plan for the future. If Taysom becomes our new Drew... We're always going to need a new Taysom. Great play by John Johnson the third, by the way. He ends up being the play Super Bowl MVP, so give him props. But we need a new Taysom after Taysom, which is why we filled a position of need with the Joker position. We definitely need a Joker. And no one else is going to ever be able to match what we have, have with Taysom. Hopefully Tommy will turn out to be the new Taysom for this team. I'm really excited to see if Tommy Stevens is going to get involved at all this year. But if he's he's probably going to still be on a roster, and that means the Saints will have four quarterbacks on the rosters, which is ridiculous, but also really, really cool. But also, I'd like to defend another draft here, okay? They're saying the Redskins had a med draft. I actually think they provided some very weak spots with some much-needed reinforcement. You got, I think, Chase Young was a no-brainer at number two he is an amazing talent generational talent and remember last year the, the 49ers had other key issues it wasn't just that they couldn't rush the passer they took they took nick bosa i think the redskins could be like the 49ers not as successful but i think they could make the playoffs next year with this draft class chase young matthew ionitis <sighs> Jonathan Allen and Deron Payne will make a killer front four. And then you got in the linebacker group, uh, Montez Sweat, uh, Cole Holcomb, which was a standout rookie last year. And you have uh, Ryan Kerrigan in the secondary. It's a very it's a weak spot for him, but they also have got Landon Collins, and they picked up Kendall Fuller in free agency. And then out on top of that, they got a new running back slash receiver in uh, Gainwell. Not Gainwell. What's his name? I don't know. Uh, Antonio Gibson is what I mean. And they got Anthony Antonio Gandy-Golden, who was an amazing receiver for Liberty. Anyways, this is the last episode. I'm going to miss talking to you guys every day. Anyways, please hit that like button. Comment down below for any new suggestions on videos i appreciate it every time Pl click that little thumbs up button it makes me feel happy inside also if you could just please 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 if you could give me that last 17th subscriber anyways this is ggb co-host puffers saying adios amigos <laughs>